Hello, and thank you for joining the Word of Faith Love Center channel. I'm Dr. Reginald Garman, and we're just so delighted to have you join us today. I pray that this message that you will hear, it will inspire your soul, it will renew your mind, and it will just bring such joy in your spirit and challenge you to be everything that God has called you to be. Our mission here at Word of Faith Love Center is to love God with our living and to live God through our loving. Share this channel with your family and friends, and we hope to see you real soon at a live service right here at Word of Faith Love Center. God bless you. Um, I want to get into the word of the Lord today from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 5. And um, very familiar passage, Luke chapter 5. And before I speak the word of the Lord. I want to encourage all of my um, seasoned saints, um, please be here for our youth Sunday, which is the last Sunday of this month. Um, I, I, I don't think it's right for you to say, well, I'm going to skip church today since it's youth Sunday, um, because these youth are worshiping God with all of their hearts, even when it's not youth Sunday. And so when we have you Sunday, I think we owe it to them to show them the same support that they show us each and every Sunday. Amen. And all my youth said, amen, amen. So I will be here and we're going to be here supporting and celebrating what God is doing in your life as the youth. And um, it's not one or the other. It's one and the other. And so we all have something that we bring to the table. So all, all of my people, make sure you show up on the last Sunday of the month and uh, be here to support and let them know that you are there for them. The older women teaching the younger women, the older men teaching the younger men. We're in this thing together. They need your wisdom, but you need their strength. So we need one another. We're interdependent, not independent. We're interdependent. We are a generational church. We are a generational church. Amen? Here in Luke chapter 5, I'm excited about the word of the Lord today. It says, verse number 1, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret. It is also called the Sea of Galilee. And he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. You know, you're a bad speaker when you can sit down and everybody else is standing up. He sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, lunch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to speak this morning from the subject, your shift is not over. 
your sieve is not over. Here we find uh, Jesus coming down to the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee, and he, he finds these fishermen. And this story and this text in Luke is further collaborated in the book of Matthew as well as the book of Mark. And when you read this text within the context of what Jesus was doing, Jesus was calling fishermen to elevate them to a higher calling. That he was taking these that knew how to fish in the natural and he was calling them to a higher calling to teach them how to be fishermen of men. So he called these disciples that he knew, knew a little something about fishing. And this is why when God called you, he doesn't get rid of your gifts and talents that you developed outside of the church. But he will sanctify those gifts and talents and use them for the upbuilding of his kingdom. It's amazing how many people are so balanced and so engaging and so inviting and so humorous and, and so strong before they come to Christ. And then when they come to Christ, it seems like they lose their minds. And I wonder where's the person that was so effective out here in the world and now you act like you can't use those same gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. If you were organized in the world, you should be organized in the church. If you like doing things in excellence in the world, you should be able to walk up here in the church and say, we ain't having this kind of mess up in the church. Let's get it right. If you were humorous out there in the world, you ought to learn how to tell a few jokes in the church. Just got to clean it up a little bit. But God will take what you did well out in the world. He will take your gifts and your talents and even your natural personality and then he will bring that into his kingdom. Why? So you can become fishermen of men because people that knew you back in the day and they see you now, they don't even believe that God has did a real change in your life because you're so different. And I know that we are peculiar people, we are a royal priesthood, we are a holy nation, but part of who you are that attracted you to others, God will clean that up so that now you can go back into the world and speak to your classmates, speak to your family members, speak to those that's on your job and be able to win them to Jesus Christ. So he took fishermen and made them fishermen of men. And here we find Jesus down at the Sea of Galilee and he finds Simon and he saw two boats and he said, listen, I need to take one of these boats. And, and what he discovered was he found them washing their nets because they had been out at night fishing all night, which is the best way to fish when you're doing net fishing because the fish cannot see the net. So they were fishing at night, and here comes Jesus getting ready to call them back out into the Sea of Galilee to go fishing again. And so they had called it quits. They were washing their nets. They were done because they had not caught anything, anything. And so many of us today, we are washing our nets. We are trying to stop doing some things because we are not seeing the results that we thought we should have seen. And so we're by the seashore washing our nets, giving up on our dreams, throwing in the towel, not doing what God has called us to do, thinking that our season is over and that we missed our opportunity. We are giving up hope and we are thinking that we can't go any further. We're thinking we will never Never find love we are thinking that it will never happen for us we are giving up on our dream and we are washing our nets what nets are you washing what have you just thrown up your hands and said forget it to and said listen I tried I've been out here all night long and nothing has happened 
And then we get back and we're discouraged and our spirits are broken and we're washing our nets because we figured that this thing is not meant to be. But the devil is a liar. If God has called you to do something, baby, don't you give up. If he said it, you got to believe it. So the disciples is there and I can imagine how discouraged they were looking. And here comes Jesus by the seashore, and he tells Simon, he says, Simon, I need your boat. Can you push away from the shore just a little bit? And the Bible says he started teaching the multitudes. See, sometimes when you get discouraged, and sometimes when you experience disappointments and let down, you need a word from God. Sometimes when your efforts have not shown any progress. Sometimes when you feel like you've just been um, putting all this effort into something and nothing has changed when you prayed until you couldn't pray no more when you cried until you couldn't cry no more. Sometimes when you go through life and you feel like you take one step forward and two steps back, you need God to get into your boat and give you a word. I don't know if the word was for the multitude or if the word was for Simon. This is why you can be in a multitude of people in the sanctuary, but it seems like God is talking directly to you because God knows where you are he knows what you're dealing with he knows how discouraged you get sometimes he knows how you get restless sometimes and how you get disappointed sometimes he knows what you've been toiling about and you have not seen no results and God said I'm getting in your boat today I'm speaking a word. I'm coming in your prayer closet. I'm going to show up in your bedroom. I'm going to ride with you in the car to work on Monday morning because I know you don't feel like going to work, but I got a word for somebody. And the word is, your shift is not over. I know you can't wait to five o'clock to punch that clock and get off work, but sometimes God will show up and say, not yet. Baby, you got to work some overtime. Your ship is not over. There's still something. I'm done with this. I can't deal with this no more. I'm washing my net. I'm throwing in the towel. I'm selling my boat. I am finished. And then Jesus shows up and say, pull out from the shore. I got a word for you. I know you're tired. I know people that have done you wrong and folks said they was going to help you and they didn't show up. is washing the nets. And many of us, we've washed our nets. We've been like, you know what, I'm done. I'm, I'm deleting their number out of my phone. I'm blocking them. I'm done with this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody, anybody say, yeah, Pastor, I'm washing the nets right now. I'm already saying I'm done with this mess. If I can quit tomorrow, i do it. I'm washing my nets. I don't have to deal with this. Come on now, don't leave me out here hanging by myself now. I'm washing our nets, washing our nets. And then I thought about it. I'm like, why in the world are you washing nets? Why, why is there a need to wash nets? Why, 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 why if you're throwing nets in water, it seems like it should already be clean. It seemed like, you know, I was in the water last week and it was fine with me. Why you got to watch something in such pretty water? I've been to the Sea of Galilee. Why in the world, if the net has been in water all that time, you got to get back to shore to put more water on the net? Because sometimes you never get your renewing and your refreshing in the battle that you're in, but you got to take yourself someplace else to get renewed and refreshed so you can go back and fight the good fight of faith. I can't get refreshed on my job. 
up. I got to go home. I got to go to church. I got to go to the golf course. Same air, but different atmosphere. Everything happens in the right atmosphere. And you got to know what is your atmosphere to get your washing, to get your refreshing, to get your renewing. You can be in something, but you can't get refreshed in that something. And that's why Jesus even himself said he withdrew himself from the multitude and went up to the mountains. Because he said, y'all about to drive me crazy down here. And I've been getting ready to wash my net. Everybody that's been called to God had a moment where they was washing their net. Like, I'm done with church, folks. Come on, mama. You pastor. Mama, how many times did you wash your nets? Oh, Jesus. How many times you're like, I'm done with church, folks. I'm done with these folks. How many times have you said, I'm done with this marriage? Everybody look straight ahead. You don't think I washed a net in 30 years? Oh, y'all don't want to be real today. Oh, y'all don't, don't want to be real today? All oh, my married folks, you mean to tell me you ain't washed not one net in 30 years? Don't mess with me today. Don't play with me today. You know you done washed some nets. If I got to tell this person one more time, don't put my shirt in that drawer. Don't you come home after 11 o'clock again. Stop talking to... <laughs> Wash your nets. It's a sign that you're like, I'm done with this. And I'm, God sent me here today to tell you, your shift is not over. You think you're getting ready to get off work? Tell your neighbor, say, your shift is not over. You think you're getting ready to retire? God, God got another thing for you. You may retire from that, but God is going to send you someplace else. Yo, yo, shift is not over. God got something else for you. You just leaving that season. But God's got another season in store for you. Because when your season is really over, it's time for him to call you home. Your shift is not over. But then I began to understand and I asked God, why in the world are they washing these nets? Because it didn't make logical sense to a mechanical engineer why you got to wash something that's been in water all along. And then God, I looked it up, and I, because I'm not a fisherman, I'm a, I'm a golfer. <laughs> I, I know golf. I don't know fish. So I had to look it up. And what I discovered was fishermen wash nets because sometimes the net get debris in it. Sometimes you catch something that you wasn't looking for. Sometimes you out here fishing and something gets caught up in the net that you didn't intend to catch. Nor do you want. Nor is it healthy for you to eat. So what you got to do is go back to the shore, look at your net, and get rid of Amen. all the stuff that shouldn't be a part of your boat and throw it back in the ocean. See, that's the problem with some of us. We take whatever we catch.
So sometimes we got to wash our nets and go through our contacts list and be like, yeah, I caught that, but I don't want that. I caught that, but that's not good for me. I don't know how that got caught up in here. Tell your neighbor, say, clean your net, baby. How, how in the world did that get connected to me? I don't even like that kind of person, but I was so desperate, I just threw my net out. So we take it back and we do inventory and we look at what got caught in there by mistake. But it was the devil trying to get you to eat something that's not good for you. That's why they wash their nets. They got to get rid of the debris. And this is what I discovered too. They wash their nets because sometimes there is bacteria in the net. And when bacteria grows in the net because it has not been washed in a while, the bacteria, when you do catch fish, the bacteria will harm the fish. And the fish will get what is called gill disease. Gills are how the fish breathes. But if you don't wash your net, when you finally catch your man, <laughs> let, 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 me talk, let me talk to my folks over here. When you finally get what you're praying about, if you got a little bacteria, you're going to end up infecting the good fish. So it's not that you can't catch them, you can't keep them because bacteria is stuck in your net and you still got this little attitude about you. Baby, watch your net. I can't breathe around you. My gills are diseased. I don't get life when I'm around you because you got too much hurt. You got too much pain. Clean your Are we okay? So sometimes washing the net was about a work of faith because the fishermen will wash their net not based on what was in the past, but based on what's in the future because the fishermen believe by faith that if God said I'm going to have it, I need to make sure my net is worth catching because I don't want to catch something that I'm not ready for. So let me wash my net by faith because my, my season is coming. And I don't want to run away somebody that God is bringing in my life because I know my season is coming. So sometimes washing your net is about you dealing with all the pain and the hurt and the bitterness that you have developed through the years to make sure that your big grouper and red snapper that is flowing into your life, don't get in there and be like, uh, 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 what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with your red snapper. What's wrong is there's bacteria that was in the net. Are we learning something? I told you, I'm a golfer. I had to research this because it didn't make sense to me. Why are you washing nets? Then Jesus get in the boat and he tells Simon this. He said, you got to lunch into the deep. 
I, can y'all feel Simon? Can you just feel him? Simon Peter, can you feel? You know how Peter was, right? Don't you know Simon Peter looked at Jesus like, where you think we've been fishing? Who? They do petty stuff. They're superficial. They're not real. They're not authentic. They smile in your face and talk about you behind your back. Stop fishing in shallow water. Because deep people, when deep people get together, they talk about solutions. They talk about opportunity. They talk about what we're doing for God. But shallow folks, they get messed up in the sand and the dirt. Shallow folks want to talk about people. Deep folks want to talk about promises. Shallow folks do a whole lot of murmuring and complaining, but deep folks say we can do all things through Christ. So take inventory of where you've been fishing. And if you've got a whole lot of shallow people in your life, it's time to clean the net. He said, launch out into the deep. He said, we ain't trying to catch no shallow folks. You can't really grow in your relationships with people until you have deep conversations. You don't make it 30 years by every day talking about, so how's the weather today? So what did you do today? How you feeling today? You don't grow in relationships by having shallow conversation. You grow in relationships by having deep conversation. If there's one thing I can do better in the next 30 years of my marriage, what is it, baby? Tell me how I can be a better husband. Let's have deep conversations. Let's have real conversations. Let's have genuine conversation and talk all this shallow stuff. How you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. No, you not. <laughs> Pastor, I got some things that I'm going through and I need to talk to you about it. I know that I'm blessed. I know that God loves me. But can I be real with you, Pastor? I'm getting discouraged. That's real. That's not superficial. That's real. And folks want real relationships, not this surface stuff, not this shallow stuff. That's what's wrong with our world. We don't know what's real. We don't know if the hair's real, the nails are real, the eyelashes are real. Well, we definitely don't know if that's real. shallow they got it all together but they don't have no sense can we have an intelligent conversation without you taking selfies I don't know about you, but I'm even tired of shallow church. I'm tired. I'm tired of us coming to church and not being real with one another. Because sometimes we can be the best actors in the world. And that's why a lot of times our young people, they lose a lot of respect for us because they see mama on Sunday morning, but then they see mama on Monday morning. And those are two different mamas. But yet we're telling our baby, baby, go to church. Is that what church do? Does that church make you fake like that, mama? Because mama, you're blessing the Lord on Sunday, but you're cussing me out on Monday. And Jesus is telling us today, 
It's time for you to get in deeper water. Amen. It's time for you to get in deeper water. Yeah. Because maybe you're not catching what you're looking for because you're fishing in the wrong zone. You don't catch millionaires in certain places. Yeah. Got to go to where the millionaires hang out. <laughs> they hang out on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the furniture stores. And the Ritz Carlton. They don't hang out at Red Roof Inn. Okay. So Jesus come to Simon and I'm done. I'm done. Simon said, Jesus, I've toiled all night. The word toil means to labor, to work, to hustle. It means I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I want you to know that after you have toiled and Jesus asks you to go back out there and tells you your shift is not over, it takes faith to keep working. It takes faith to keep working. It takes faith to keep toiling, to keep fighting. It takes faith to say, I'm not going to throw in the towel. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, look at this. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. God said, I don't care if you're circumcised or uncircumcised. That don't matter to me. He said, but faith working through love. And what I've noticed is people are doing things that they don't love. And that's why they're exhausted. And they're toiling in something they don't love. Because when you really love something, it's hard to lose faith in it. When you love something, you keep faith and that keeps you getting up every morning. Oh, yeah. That keeps you fighting. That keeps you believing that any day now my change is going to come. Oh, yeah. That's why people that don't love what you love will not fight the way you fight. And you got to be careful when people try to talk you out of giving up and not launching out into the deep because maybe they don't love what you love. Whatever you love shows in your work ethic. This is why I can tell what you're waiting on by what you're working on. If you're not working on it, you're not waiting on it. I can tell what you're waiting on by what you're working on. Faith without works is dead. James chapter 2 verse 18, look at this. I'm done. Got two minutes. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. James says, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. That's why Jesus would come to you and say, you ain't done yet. You're not finished. Your shift is not over. He said, this is what I called you to do. This is your calling. This is your assignment. I know you're frustrated. I know you've been toiling all night long. I know you're exhausted. I know you're feeling down and you're feeling depressed. I know you're discouraged. I know you're wondering, Lord, would this ever change? Will this ever change? Will I ever see my breakthrough? And Jesus is like, get back in the boat. Wash your net and get back in the boat. And when they got out into the deep, he said, drop your nets. 
drop your nets. Jesus told Peter, Simon Peter, to drop his nets, plural. But verse number five in Luke, the Bible says Simon dropped a net, singular. This is why sometimes call themselves going back to work, but you don't go back to work until you go back and give it your all. When God says your shift is not over, don't just go back and give a little bit more. Because if you're going back, you might as well give it your all. Because sometimes you, some of y'all will hear this word today and say, okay, Lord, I hear you, my shift is not over. But you're going to go back and give the very least that you can give. And call yourself saying, well, I went back. I went back to work. No, you didn't go back to work. You just went back and gave a little bit. But when you go back, give it your all. Because what makes you think you're going to catch anything if you don't give it your all? He let down the net. But Jesus told him to let down the nets. And even with that, it started breaking the net because Jesus brought the abundance of fish to the point where he had to call other people. And that's a whole nother message for a whole nother day. Is that whatever God calls you to do, you can never do it by yourself. You always need a network. A network. And sometimes, okay, sometimes God will let you fail because you tried to do it by yourself and you wanted all the blessings to yourself with your selfish self. And you've been out there all night trying to do it for you, trying to do it for you, and you ain't caught nothing. And then God will send you back out there when he humbles you and say, see there, you thought this was all about you. This ain't all about you. You need a neck work you need people that can help you do what I called you to do because Simon you may own the boat but Jesus owned the seas I hope you got something out of the word of the Lord today hallelujah thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, come into my boat. As I launch out in the deep, I would do what you tell me to do. I would go where you tell me to go. I would fight the good fight of faith. I realize my shift is not over. Thank you, Lord, for giving me strength for giving me guidance, for giving me wisdom to be able to do what you call me to do. Faith without works is dead. And now, Lord, I put work into my faith to see you glorified in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Take your seats just for one second. If you're in this place, every head bow and every eye closed. If you're in this place and you find yourself just, you got one foot in and one foot out, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You got one foot in and one foot out. I don't know who I'm talking to here today, but you're halfway there and you're halfway gone. And God is really needing to speak to you and say, what are you going to do? Maybe, just maybe, your shift is not over. Just maybe God brought you back in just to clean your nets. And now he's going to send you back out for the harvest. I want you to hear God's voice. I want you to pray and ask God, Lord, what it is you want me to do. Because just maybe, just maybe, your shift is not over. You do know when you work overtime, you get time and a half. That God will give you double for your trouble. 
And some of y'all, God is going to bless you abundantly because you didn't quit. Because you didn't throw in the towel. God is going to bless you. If you're in this place and you need to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ, maybe you once knew him, but you sort of fell away from him. But now it's time for you to get back in a deep relationship with him. Maybe you've had one foot in the church and one foot out of the church. But now is the time for you to make a full commitment to him. I don't want to leave this place without giving you an opportunity to say, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. I have not been as committed as I need to be. But today, I want to confess my faults and my sins, and I know that he's faithful and just to forgive them. So while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you would just lift up your hand, I just want to pray for you before you leave today. If you need to rededicate your life to him, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you in the balcony, I see your hand. Thank you back in the back. Thank you, thank you all over the sanctuary. This is between you and God. Ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. This is between you and God. Jesus died so that you can have life. And he knew that we were not perfect. We would make mistakes, but guess what? He already provided a way for us to come back to him. It's called redemption. He redeems us. So those that raise your hand, or if you should have raised your hand, you can put your hand down now. And I want everyone to say this prayer with me. Dear Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. You know my heart. You know everything about me. And today, Lord, I'm recommitting my life to you. Thank you, Father, for loving me, for saving me, and for forgiving me. You said... If I call on the name of the Lord, I shall be saved. So, Lord, I'm calling you today and thanking you today for salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the doors of the church are open. If you feel God leading you to make Word of Faith Love Center your church home, just very quickly, very quickly, just get out of your seats. Come down here to the altar. I want to invite you to join the Lord's church. Everybody needs a church home. Everybody needs a pastor. If you feel like today is your day to join God's church, please get out of your seats and come down here to the altar. Come on, my sister. We welcome you. We welcome you. The doors of the church are open. We welcome you into the house of the Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Anybody else before we pray for our dear sister today? Anybody else before we pray? Amen, amen, amen. First lady, come and lay hands on her today. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Stretch your hand towards our dear sister. Father, we thank you so much for drawing your daughter here to Word of Faith's Love Center, a place that she can believe, belong, and become. I pray, Father, that the blessing that is upon my life will come upon her life, that you will knit our hearts together, make us family, make us one. I pray that every gift and every talent that you've given to her will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, I declare that her shift is not over, God, and that, Lord, you're still going to do wonderful things in her life and through her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands and welcome her to the family. Just go to my right and your left. Stand to your feet, everybody. I want to invite everybody to um, join us in Grace Garden today. We are so grateful to be able to open up Grace Garden. This is the before picture that you see on the screen right now. This is the before picture, and um, I think we have, you'll see the, the, the after picture when you go out in the garden. We have a wonderful reception for you. We got some food and some some dessert and some, some, I think some lemonade or we got something out there. I don't know. They, they, we got something out there. It's, it's going to hold you over until you can go to Longhorn, okay? But uh, just please go out there and see Grace Garden. We want it, it to be a place, a fellowship, a place where you can come and relax. Hopefully in the future, we're going to have some outside movies where we can come and just watch a movie out there in Grace Garden. It is for you. This is for you. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of Word of Faith Love Center and see the one wonderful things that we're doing right here at your church. Once again, Mays High School, thank you so much for being with us today. We really enjoyed your presence here today. Let's pray. Oh, before we leave, oh, the Woodmore celebrated 50 years of marriage. 
Deacon Woodmore, Sister Lula, come on, let, let them see what 50 years look like. Come on. Come on, yes, come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, Deke. This is what 50 years looks like. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I know you watched some nets, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> amen, amen. But you realize your shift was not over. Your assignment was not done. And God still has more for y'all to do. Amen. Father, Lord, as we leave this place, but never ever from your grace, may your spirit rest, rule, and abide with us. I pray divine blessings upon your people. May favor surround them like a shield. And I pray that you would give them the strength, the endurance to do what you called them to do. Order their steps as they leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Y'all have a wonderful week.